The first quarter GDP number has come in at 13.5%, which is lower than street estimates. They were standing at 15 to 15.5%. They are also lower than the Reserve Bank's projection, which was 162 Now, if you adjust this lower Q1 number into the G, uh, RBI numbers, the RBI's full year forecast arithmetically should fall from 72 to 6.7%, and many economists have already brought down their forecasts. But let me give a, a different interpretation. At the outset, a 13.5% GDP growth over 20% last year Q1 doesn't look all that bad. Let me explain why and what looks weak. The actual Q1 GDP is 36.85 lakh crore, which is only 3.8% higher than the pre-COVID number you know, of FY20, the first quarter. The weak elements are one, construction. Construction GDP has come in at 2.62 lakh crore. It's a good 16.8% higher than last year. But if you compare it to the pre-COVID level, then in three years, the growth is just 1.1%. Likewise, another huge category, trade, hotels, transport, communication, and broadcasting. A large segment, its GDP was 5.59 lakh crore in the latest Q1. It is 26% above last year but 15% below what it was three years ago. That is FY20Q1. And these are the two sectors that comprise, you know, the small MSME units, your UDP hotels, traders, unorganized labor. Okay, now what are the strong points? Private final consumption at 22 lakh crore is 26% uh, above last year and a good 10% over the three-year go level. Not bad at all. And capital formation, gross fixed capital formation has come in at 12.8 lakh crore, which is nearly 7% above the three year ago level. Not spectacular, but at least not all that bad. So what more does this Q1 number tell us about the hidden weaknesses and strength of the economy? Is the strength in domestic consumption, which I pointed out, strong enough to improve the coming quarters? Or will the coming quarters be worse off because of the global slowdown? For all these questions, I'm joined by an eminent panel, Abhishek Upadhyay of ICICI Securities, Primary Dealer, Pranap Sen, uh, the former chairman of the Statistics Commission, Samiran Chakrabarti, Chief Economist, City India, and Rob Subraman, the Global Economist of Nomura. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Rob, let me start with you. I mean, it's a great year-on-year -year story because, you know, we had a terrible uh, uh, first quarter of FI21. But this weakness over the three year ago level, is this an Indian phenomenon? Or are you seeing it everywhere? How do you interpret this number? Hi, Lasse. It's great to be back on your show. I would say it's not just an Indian phenomenon. I'd say it's an emerging market phenomenon. If you're looking at uh, many emerging markets and their levels of GDP now, compared to just before the pandemic, they're some are still not even back to that level. Um, some are only just marginally above that level. So uh, e emerging markets, uh, much more so than developed economies, have really struggled to, to fully recover from, from this pandemic. And I'd say India uh, is in that bucket as well. Okay. All right. I'll come back to you uh, on the global impact, uh, recessionary impact. But... Uh, uh, Samiran, I got your note and you also point out that actually domestic demand is very strong. I, I pointed out to the personal final consumption numbers as well. Uh, if that is so strong, should not the uh, 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 domestic consumption engine be able to propel us better in the, year, in the quarters to come? Why are you reducing your GDP forecast? Uh, so good morning, Lata. Uh, actually, most of our uh, GDP growth forecast revision is simply a arithmetic exercise because the first quarter GDP came in much weaker than what we were expecting. So we had to adjust for it. If you look at our rest of the year forecast, we haven't changed those forecasts in a very big way, at least in a sequential momentum sense. And part of the reason simply is this hope that uh, the, the pace of domestic growth momentum uh, would continue in, in the latter part of the year. Uh, obviously, the big hit for the first quarter uh, GDP was the almost uh, minus 600 basis point impact that came from net exports. And to what extent current account deficit moderates in the latter part of the year 
and this headwind becomes lesser uh, is going to be critical. If we believe that some of these headwinds remain very strong, then even the 6.7% forecast that we have for the full year, there could be downside risk to that number as well. Oh, okay. Now that opens a, a new line of thinking. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of people. We just have Moody, uh, Moody's uh, cutting down growth rates of both uh, global economy, emerging markets, India, uh, US, uh, just about every economy. Uh, Dr. Sen, you know, I was pointing out to construction and trade, the large uh, sectors which represent the lower part of the economy doing so terribly. Uh, what is your interpretation? Can that hold back overall growth? Or can this strong consumption of the upper part of the economy continue to propel us? The consumption pattern is skewed. And uh, that can propel us for a while, but it's not sustainable in the medium term. Uh, the question is, how long is the medium term that we are talking about? If we are talking about the next couple of quarters, we may still be okay. But I think after that, we should start expecting a falling off until and unless we start seeing a very, very strong response in construction and in the trade hotels and restaurants uh, sector, which as you said, are, are, are very large sectors for employment. Um, but having said that, you know, I think there was a little bit of, uh, of exuberance in the projections that were made earlier. Um, if you recall, I've been saying that we should be expecting around six and a half percent with a downside risk. Uh, and that seems to be coming true. Mm. I mean, I'm not claiming credit for this. It's bad news, but but we really should, should be cautious about uh, sort of over projecting what the Indian economy is doing. And we haven't yet factored in what is going to be the effects of the tightening of monetary policy. Yes, yes. At the moment, it doesn't seem to have had much effect. Mm -hmm. But no. sooner or later, it will. Uh, I take your point, Sam. That is going to be my uh, next set of questions. But before that, one more question to you, Abhishek. Uh, any other points from the GDP uh, that we have not yet discussed? And particularly, I wanted your view on, you know, government, whether it can make a difference. Government final consumption expenditure has hardly grown. It's somehow not gelling with the fiscal data we got uh, you know, it looks like there the expenditure is not bad at all. But do you think those are factors that can propel, like construction, you know, capex, uh, whether any of these can give us an upside surprise? Well, so the main reason uh, for down downward surprise compared to our forecast, which was close to RBI, was the industrial sector performance. So manufacturing, mining sector, the growth pickup in those segments was much weaker compared to uh, what you would expect based on data such as IAP. Uh, that in turn reflected uh, uh, margin squeeze uh, faced by this sector because of higher commodity prices. Uh, now, the silver lining is that commodity prices have come off uh, of late and uh, that should then uh, act on the opposite side and support uh, the numbers in the current quarter and perhaps in the second half of the year as well. Uh, uh, on the on the uh, government spending side, uh, yes. Uh, so uh, uh, center uh, 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 government spend uh, on the CAPEX side has been strong, but on the REVEX uh, front has been weak. Also, the state's uh, spending has has started on a on a on a relatively soft note. So, uh, but the, these these segments, uh, uh, you would think that uh, 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 government uh, looking at the current bond deals, for instance. Uh, which are so low, government uh, uh, will have some fiscal space to spend uh, because tax collection number is also looking uh, reasonably robust. Uh, so uh, I would think government spending will will pick up uh, both on the REVEX side because a lot of the subsidy spend tends to be back-ended and on the CAPEX front because states uh, will spend more uh, uh, in the remaining months after a very weak start. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, one hopes that can be a propeller. But uh, Rob... You know, I was talking about these global numbers coming in lower, people cutting forecasts for China, for US, uh, and for the global economy. Will this mean that there will be more headwinds for growth? And will Nomura itself look to lower its India GDP forecast? So absolutely, there's going to be headwinds. Uh, we're already forecasting uh, recessions in the US, 
uh, Eurozone, UK, Canada, Australia, South Korea, New Zealand, many economies now we think are going to have negative growth for the whole of 2023. Uh, let's face it, uh, central banks have been very clear now post Jackson Hole, they're going to get inflation down no matter what. Uh, if that means tightening into recession, so be it. We have an energy crisis in Europe and droughts in other parts of the world. We have China really struggling with its zero COVID strategy and a property crisis as well. There's a lot of headwinds to global growth. Uh, we have minus 1% roughly GDP for the US, Euro, Europe next year. Uh, there's clearly downside risk to our India GDP growth forecast for 2023, which is currently 4.7%. Uh, I, I mean, I think this GDP number that just came out for India, I don't want to sugarcoat it. I think that's, that's as best as it gets. I think it's slowing down from here. Uh, there was a reopening uh, uh, pent-up demand that helped. There was a public infrastructure push. But going forward, I think we're heading to a slowdown, and I think uh, many economists will be revising down their growth forecasts as external factors hit. Oh, okay. That's not looking good. Uh, well, uh, uh, Saviran, uh, uh, let's talk about uh, net exports, g taking from what uh, uh, Rob has said. Uh, you point out in your note that actually net exports is one of the reasons why we have done badly. I mean, our imports have done hugely well and exports are uh, certainly not keeping pace. Won't that continue? What is your best hunch? So, obviously, in a nominal sense, the current account deficit number is going to be maybe higher in, in, in 2Q compared to 1Q. Uh, but post that, we are expecting the nominal uh, trade deficit numbers to start uh, moderating a bit. Uh, the question is that uh, to what extent this uh, the deflator of this uh, would affect the uh, real real part in the GDP, and it becomes a bit technical to uh, to understand. Uh, the other issue is that if India growth is also slowing down to some extent, the import volumes should also come off and the relatively whether global growth is going to slow down even faster affecting our export volumes, that is going to be a critical driver. But at this moment, we have been slightly optimistic in forecasting that for the next uh, few quarters, the headwind from this net exports will not be as sharp as it was in the first quarter. Oh, really? Uh, Dr. Sen, what's your guess? Uh, do you think, I mean, the way in which uh, uh, other countries are uh, getting their estimates lowered, uh, will exports be a bigger drag in the second half? Uh, Samiran thinks not. No, I think, I think Rob was fairly clear about it. Yes, of course it's going to be a drag. The real question is not what's going to happen to expo exports. I think that's almost, almost entirely predictable. The real question is what's going to happen on the import side. And the thing is that if we are expecting the overall growth rate to be, you know, even if it's slightly sub 7%, um, what gives us to think that import growth will come off? I mean, other than the... The, the pricing of the, the commodities. Um, the sense that I have is that we have entered a consumption growth pattern, which is import intensive. And that's not going to be changing in a hurry. Mm. So my worry, as I said, on exports, I'm not worrying because I think that's inevitable and Rob was very clear about that. But on the import side, I am less sanguine. Okay, if imports are going to be strong, then there is a current account deficit issue. Then to what extent will the Reserve Bank be forced to continue to hike rates because the Fed is also hiking rates and the external sector will have to be defended? All those questions to my guests after the break.